Hey everyone, my name is Thomas Little, and I just want to do a few plugs before we get started on our video. You can reach me at, on Twitter at Thomas Little DBA. You can reach me on Facebook, and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channels. A lot of great, a lot of great videos coming out, uh, and alike. So let's go ahead and get started on our video. So let's go through and start talking about creating databases. So as I mentioned before, it's extremely easy to create a database within SQL Server. You can issue just a create database statement or you can actually issue the create database statement with a number of different options. So let's go through and talk about just creating a simple database and how it works. So in our first example here, see here that I highlighted, um, this is just going to create a very simple empty database called sample database and it's going to use the model database and all of its options in order to create that and I'll show you how that is going to work so when you're in management studio uh, and you're connected to your server expand the system databases and let's go to model and you know just for fun let's create a let's create a table within the model database and what my intent here is to show you that when you create a new database, I'm just going to create a table with just a column in it. When you create a new database, everything in the model database is brought over to your new database. So I created this table within model called table underscore one. Very simple table and there's no data in it. But we're going to create a new database based upon the model database just by is issuing the create database statement. So when we execute that, and it goes through and it creates the database, uh, we sh will see that table in that database. So let's right click, let's refresh. There is our new sample database. And when we expand tables, we see that table. So again, options in or objects in the model database will be carried over just by that sample. Now, you could do just something very simple like create database and the database name and you're done. But what if you want to specify a little bit more options? What if you want to specify the size of the database because you have to be uh, a bit mindful of that? Uh, you want to specify other file groups and indexes. Um, so what we're going to do is actually, and now that I look at this, this is incorrect. So let's do this go. So what we're going to do in this statement is actually create a database with a log file and we're going to specify options in it. You can see here we're specifying the size of the MDF, so this is the primary data file. We're specifying how big it can get so it can become unlimited and it's growing at increments of 128 megs. The same is our sample DB log file. So basically if I if I were to read this statement, we're going to create a database called SampleDB. We're going to create a primary data file just called SampleDB, and it's assigned to this MDF file with these properties. We're then going to create a log for our database called SampleDB underscore log, and it's assigned to this LDF file, and it has these particular properties. So when we highlight this and we execute this statement when we refresh our screen here we will see our sample DB created and if we right click on it and go to properties we will go and look at the files property and we will see that our two files have been created our log and our data and we will see that the file sizes are what we specified and our auto growth is what we specified. Here's our location and here's our files. Now, that's great. Now we want to alter these by adding additional file groups uh, to these databases. Altering a database is quite simple and you can do that through the GUI here uh, by clicking the add button and you can type in your you can type in the name of your database file choose what file group it's a part of and assign it or you could do it through T SQL 
I'm going to show you how to do it through T-SQL, and then we'll view it through the GUI. So I'm going to cancel out of here, and go into my script here. So what you'll see here is we're going to be altering the database, the sample DB database, and we're going to add a file group called FGSDB. So we're going to execute this. And when we execute it, if we go to our sample DB and we go to properties, we can see that we have a file group called FGSDB. If we wanted to add another file group, we could do it through the GUI. And you can see here that I did that. And once we click OK, and we go back into it, right click on it and hit properties, we'll see our file groups. So there are two ways that you could do it. You could do it through the GUI or you can do it through uh, T-SQL. Now, now we have a file group. Great, well, what can you do with it? Well, now you gotta assign a file to that. And so in our next example here, we're gonna assign this sample DB data to dot NDF file that has the 128 meg size and a file growth of 128 megs. And we're gonna assign it to the file group that we just created up here. So when we highlight this and execute it, it's gonna go ahead and create our file of 128 megs. And when we right click on it and go, we right click on our database and go into properties and we go into files, we will now see our data to file here. And it is a part of our FG file group. It has the properties that we set too. If you wanted to do it through the GUI, you can do it the same way. So if we do sample db data3, and let's say we want to do it to that other file group we created. Do that, 128, and we will set our property growth to 128, and let's set our directory, oops, let's set our directory to SQLDB, and we're gonna give our file a name, sampledb data3.ndf. Now, what you can do here, and something that I believe that a lot of DBAs do, is sometimes you can't remember all of the statements and clauses of an alter, create, and alike. So the GUI actually gives you the option of scripting that out for you. So even though you can do it through the GUI and I can click OK here, if I wanted to script this out and save it for later, I can do that. So up here at the top here, you will see a script button. You have a number of different options to that. You could script it to a file so you could save it. You can schedule it for later by scripting it to a job. Uh, you can just copy it to the clipboard and put it somewhere else. Or you can do it in a new query window. When I click new query window, if I go back to Management Studio, you'll see here that it actually scripted out what we already set. So I can execute it here and then cancel out of the GUI. Um, or I can just you know save this script for later. What we're going to do for our example is actually do it through the GUI. So we're going to go back here and we're going to click OK and fun will occur and there we go. So when we right click and go back into our database we'll see our file 3. And so now whenever you create tables and indexes and alike you can say create table, create index on and you specify the file group. So for example let's say we wanted to create uh, a table in here, we'll call it table two. So let's go in here, and we'll create a new table, and we'll just give it a column one. Um, if I hit F4 here, I can specify a file group. So here I just have a regular column, a data type is an NCAR. Uh, but if I wanted to uh, put this table into a particular file group, I can go here, I hit F4 by the way, um, what you see here we were in this screen, if you hit F4 on your keyboard it brings up the properties of your new table. Um, I can now specify my file group that I created and just like the GUI you can script this out too. 
So it'll actually create this for you uh, in addition. So we're going to go ahead and uh, save this. Okay, so now that is saved. We'll close out of that. Close out of here. Refresh. See, we have table one and table two. Let's see if we could do file group. It comes up. And there you go. So you can see our table one is actually in our primary file group and our um, table two is actually in the FG file group. Now, if I'm in sample DB and let's say I want to delete that file group, I'm not going to be able to because there are objects and files associated with that. So if I go here and it was this one, I try to remove it and I click OK, it's going to come back with an error message saying that you know you can't remove it because it's empty. So you have to be mindful of that when you're trying to delete file groups you need to ensure that your data file is empty. So we talked about creating databases, we talked about altering databases, we saw uh, the model database being used uh, in this example. So what about deleting databases? Well deleting databases that's not a hard thing to do so if we were to do if we wanted to delete a database we do a drop database sample db highlight that it's that simple I wanted to do the other one there we go it's that simple so we right click on refresh our databases are now gone in Ob object explorer so that is our demonstration, and that is our lesson for session five. Uh, let's go ahead and start on session six. Thank you.